Hi, it's Maria from Women Into Wellness. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about C-section recovery and how you can best heal following your surgery. So stay tuned for that. If you have not subscribed to this channel already, then please go ahead and do so, especially if you are interested in the topic of C-section recovery, because I have a series of videos that I will link below. What I'm gonna to talk to you about today is an extract taken from my online program, C-Section Recovery, Eight Elements for Healing and Rehabilitation, which takes you through and holds your hand through all of the different holistic strategies you can put into place to really maximize the potential for recovery and to make your healing journey much more clear, easy to follow, and most importantly, safe as well. So let's get started on talking about C-section recovery and how you can really boost your healing journey. Now, the first thing is to fully have an awareness and an understanding of what actually happened during your C-section surgery. Because when you have awareness and knowledge, you're more clued up on how it can affect your body and the implications that can occur as a result of having major abdominal surgery. And you are also more aware of what to look out for in the healing journey so that you're aware of any red flags. And if you want to be a little bit more clued up about what happened, then check out the video I've linked below because I cover all of the different aspects of having had a c-section in terms of what actually happens during the surgery and then the physical implications that can occur afterwards. So once you're clued up you will have the ability and the awareness and the knowledge to understand what it takes to get through that healing process and therefore have the mindset to put in place and be more likely to stick to the lifestyle strategies that are really going to best facilitate your recovery journey and make it more comfortable for you, make it more linear so that you're moving forward progressively rather than having setbacks or actually doing more harm or damage than good. So let's start talking then about some of the other things that you can put into place. Now the first one is going to be most importantly, to listen to the advice of your medical practitioners and the care team that is taking care of you and that is advising you through your healing and recovery journey. So this is gonna be from the moment that you have that surgery to whoever's on the surgical team, whoever's in the recovery ward, the midwives, the nurses that are gonna be around you. And then of course, when you are discharged from the medical facility, it's going to be your local GP or your M medical doctor, so your MD, or it's going to be the midwives or thereafter the health visitor. So really take into account the advice that they're giving to you. If they have given you any forms or sheets that you can take away with you, actually read them. Don't just file them away or chuck them in the bottom of your, bottom of your overnight hospital bag. Make sure that you read them and take that time to absorb the information and ask questions if you're confused or you need more clarity on anything that has been said to you. Now, coupled along with that as being equally as important is to really establish the mindset right now that rest and recovery is your absolute priority in terms of boosting your healing journey. So you need to slow down, you need to cut back on what you're doing, you need to get help in where and when you can and just accept that for a certain period of time, you are going to feel slightly debilitated. You are going to have less mobility, you are going to be in discomfort and you are going to be in pain and really use this as a period to just nurture that healing process. So you really want to rest and recover as much as possible. And actually in a lot of cultures, one month is given to mums postnatally. This is postnatally when they've not had surgery so that they can just rest and recover, lay down and have members of a community, members of a family, members of a tribe come and help them out, bring food for them, do the cleaning for them, help them with the baby. Isn't that a wonderful thing, right? Well, think of trying to do that as much for yourself. It's slightly easier if you've had an elective C-section in that you can plan for this. So you could batch cook some of your food, you could uh, do some of your cleaning beforehand and then just leave it for a month and just worry, not worry about things in the house. Or you can get people in to come and help. And if they do offer to help, have a list of tasks or jobs people could do for you that you would have otherwise taken for granted beforehand that you can't do for yourself now. And really just take it easy and relax. 
This also goes to be said for the level of activity that you do. So when you want to get back to activities of daily living, like driving or getting up and doing exercise or going for long walks, those things really put them on the back burner, put them on hold. It's not something you need to rush into doing. There are certain things that may not be avoidable. So you may have to move a pram on your own. You may have older children or toddlers in particular that you will need to pick up. And if you don't have the help around for someone else to do it, it's a given that some of these things you will be doing yourself. But the idea is to get into the mindset that you do is as little as possible and really just rest and allow your body to heal so that you don't do more damage than good. So now I'm going to go into the eight elements that I cover in extra detail in the online program that I have linked below. And these are really important because these are the different elements of wellness and the different strategies that you can put into place to really now facilitate and boost your healing. So the first one is about soft tissue healing and we've talked about the lifestyle modifications to facilitate that, i.e. rest, but you really want to think about what does your scar need? What are those layers of scar tissue need beneath the scar? How can you really help all of those tissues fuse and form back together? And what can you best do to allow that re process? Rest being the first one that I've already mentioned and the other ones being to really be mindful of that scar, to understand what the phases of healing are so that you can be aware of any red flags and flag these up to your medical practitioner should they occur but to really make sure as well that you are watching out for that scar as best you can and to really just make sure that those tissues can heal in the best way possible and that following on from that, you then do massage of your abdomen and your scar once it is completely healed. So now I want to get into the eight elements protocol, which is what I've provided in my online program for C-section recovery that I've linked below. These eight elements are so important because what they do when you put them together holistically is they really maximize and boost your potential for wellness. So the first one of these is to facilitate the tissue healing, so the soft tissue healing. So there's going to be lots of different lifestyle modifications you can put in place that are going to cover everything from the rest that we've talked about to nutrition, which I'll cover in a moment, and to following the medical care from your practitioner. But it also encompasses this whole idea of putting at the forefront the mindset that healing needs to take place and that the soft tissue is going to be best facilitated and allowed and supported to do that when you take this combined approach. So you're going to really rest up, you're going to have a nutrient dense diet, you're going to follow all of the care advice given by your medical team. You are also going to be mindful of any red flags that occur in the healing process. So you need to know what the healing process is and understand that so that then you can put into place at the right time all of the following strategies I am going to give you that are going to facilitate the rest of the healing for your body. So the first of these is going to be the healing of your scar. And in order to best facilitate that healing of the scar on the outside and all of the layers underneath, you need to be aware of the layers that were cut, that were moved aside and displaced. And you need to be aware of the healing timeline. For all tissue healing in the body, there are four different stages to it. So you need to be aware of those things so that you can then really allow the body to heal be aware of how it should be healing and then also be aware of any red flags that occur so that you can then go to your medical practitioner and say I'm having this symptom or this has not quite moved forward or progressed or in fact I think I've taken two steps backwards what can I do about it I need immediate help care or attention or investigation so that you can actually take ownership for that healing part of your journey you need to have eyes on your scar to do that and understand what the healing process should look like. Now, the next thing that you can do to facilitate the healing is to take on board nutrient dense food. Now, of course, I'm always going to be an advocate of whole foods. You really need to nourish yourself with as many whole foods as you can. Eat as much food as close to its natural state as you possibly can. It doesn't get any more simple than that. Fill your plate as much as possible with fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds and whole grains 
of course nuts if you're not allergic to them. Eat as much of this food from a plethora, a colorful rainbow as you can, and really take on board lots of hydration. And if you really want a nice, easy shopping list of the exact foods and <laughs> drinks and nutrients that you can take on board that are going to facilitate your recovery, then again, check out the C-section recovery course because I've got a shopping list in there for you that you can just take to the store and know that you can fill your cupboards with all the food that's going to support your healing journey. Okay, so let's start thinking now about the, the global aspect. We've talked about the scar, which is the localized soft tissue. Now let's talk about globally your musculoskeletal tissue within the body, because what you really need to do is also take care of that. When you have cut through tissues for abdominal surgery, of a c-section when you have had the stretching that occurs during a pregnancy then your soft tissue your myoskeletal tissue is going to be off balance you're going to have parts that are stretched and lengthened beyond their optimal position and length you're going to have different muscle groups and connected tissue and fascia that is going to be restricted it's going to be compacted and stuck together and shortened reduced uh, less than its optimal length and position. So you need to reset the body, you need to rebalance the soft tissue. And the best way to do this is with myofascial release techniques and strategies. And in order to do this, there's lots of different things you can do, stretches, you can do yogas, you can do massage, you can do different types of movement that take you through range of movement patterns that allow you to really get your mobility back and rebalance the body. You can also do this most importantly as well through strength training only at the time when your body is ready to do it. But what you really need to do is release that fascia in the first and most foremost instance. And that can be done with myofascial release techniques and strategies. So you need to have some of these in place. These can be done on a daily basis. And then once you feel like the body is balanced, start doing it as a maintenance protocol. So you can drop that do it down to being something that you do on a weekly basis thereafter. Following on nicely from myofascial release strategies is postural realignment. So important because pregnancy changes your posture through the shoulders and through the pelvic girdle. I have lots of video that cover postures, so check out those videos. I'll pop a link to some of them below. But also what's going to happen as well is that because you've had a C-section, you've got scar tissue forming there from the surgery. It's going to cause tightening, restrictions, adhesions, and almost like a stuckness to some of the tissue in that front part of your body where the surgery took place. So it's really important to understand that that can cause postural issues, that if those tissues, the stuck tissues in particular, the tight ones are not released, and if the weakened overstretched ones are not strengthened, that you will remain in that postural misalignment long-term, and in fact, it may get worse, and then it may cause musculoskeletal issues which we talked about earlier. So really important to be aware of your posture, to start thinking about how you can put into place postural correction, exercise modalities, myofascial release strategies, to see how you can start to release it. And I hope with what you're saying, you're seeing how everything starts to be really interlinked, doesn't it? Because uh, we've talked about how the scar affects the myofascia and the soft tissue and how then that affects your posture and how all of this comes together nicely when you think about putting together a holistic approach to your recovery program, because that's what's gonna best facilitate the whole journey for you and make sure that you recover sooner rather than later, and in fact, more safely, rather than doing potential damage or causing yourself harm. Now let's also talk about breathing and core activation. This is so important as well because pregnancy and also the surgery that is cut through that barrel of the core there is going to affect the ability of your core to communicate and also affect potentially your breathing pattern and your ability to, to take in a nice deep lateral breath into the body. And if you want to know a bit more about lateral breathing, then check out the video that I have linked below. It's so important postnatally and also particularly important to look out for if you've had surgery in your abdominal region because that will have cut through what was once an integrated core and you need to get that core connected back again through doing a nice breathing pattern that is gonna allow you to breathe laterally into the body, re-establish conscious control and connection through the core 
so you can take on board oxygen. That's gonna help you, it's gonna facilitate that recovery process because it's gonna feed all of your physiological processes. It's going to help to reduce this stress response, soothe your parasympathetic nervous system so that you start to feel more calmed and relaxed, which also helps the healing process. And of course, it's just something that is vital for your sense of well-being. And also, if you're going to be doing activities later on where you are wanting to be more active and do exercise that's higher intensity, or go and do activities of daily living or running around with your kids, a healthy breathing pattern is gonna put you in far better stead to do that. So you also need to focus on breathing and getting that core synergy back into place and a connected core. That takes us nicely onto rehabilitative exercise. So I've talked a lot about becoming a bit more active and how the breath work moves into that and how stretching and movement and mobility exercises help. What you really want to be doing is engaging in a gently progressive, c-section specific exercise rehabilitation program okay because what's that going to do it's going to take you from that rest and recover phase which is where you want to be in the beginning of your journey when you've come just out of that surgery and that's where you're going to stay until your scar is fully healed till you've been cleared for exercise from your medical practitioner which is usually really going to be between 10 and 12 weeks you usually get a check around eight to ten weeks um, but really after 12 weeks, you can be getting into this exercise routine, but it needs to be the right kind of exercise, okay? It's so important because once you've been cleared for exercise, there are still certain exercises you can do that could set back your journey, that can certainly cause a damage to your core or a more weakened core or that, or that are not going to help you really connect to your core in the most effective and efficient, safe manner. So you want a safe and effective, gently progressive exercise program that will take you right from rest and recovery through to being able to do gentle movement patterns, functional movement patterns, and then getting to the point where your body is conditioned and you have strength, not only for the general activities of daily living, but where you feel like you can actually go to the gym or go and do a workout in the park or at home that involves high impact exercise or things like HIIT or that you can run around the park and chase your kids without worrying about it because you know you've safely, progressively, methodically took your time to really rehabilitate your body so that it could be as strong as possible at the right time. So if you want to be guided through an exact program as I've just described it, then guess what? It is included in my C-section recovery program. I've said it once, I'll say it again, it's linked below. And that's really because I wanted to lay it all out for you so that you had no confusion about it because it's the question that I get asked most from the mums who have had C-section is when is it safe to do this? What exercise can I do? How can I reduce body fat? How can I get a strong core? How can I sort out my posture? This is one of the questions I get asked the most. So this is why I spent so much time creating this fully phased exercise program. It will take you from literally laying in a bed to being able to go out and do HIIT exercises, HIIT workouts, and doing upper and lower body strength training routines so that you are fully reconditioned, rebuilt, rehabilitated, and can retrain your body. And of course, I must end on the fact I've just talked about getting you to a point where you can do highly active, intense exercise, should you wish to, is the all important rest and restoration. Please, let's not forget that because that is one of the vital aspects of your recovery journey. And it's nice because this book ends everything I talked about. We started with rest at the beginning, didn't we? To say that's how you best start your journey. Well, it's gonna be the underpinning factor throughout the whole of your journey. And in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and say for the rest of your life, because rest and restoration is gonna be one of your best comforting friends in life. It's going to support you so much when you feel like you are having sleep, when you are having downtime, when you're engaging in activities that not only restore your body or that replenish and restore the nutrients within your body, but that also restore your soul, your spiritual side of yourself, so that you can retreat, you can recover, you can feel like you can replenish and refill your cup and restore and recharge your battery. 
there's a lot of rewords in there, right? So I think they could take this somewhere, but you get my drift. So it's all of those aspects of rest, restoration, that are really needing to be put into your mindset as part of your self-nurturing protocol. And that's what this whole program is teaching you, right? And what this episode here today is teaching you is to really think about nurturing yourself from a holistic point of view with the underpinning mindset that rest is gonna get you through this C-section recovery journey. It really is. And then restoration is about everything else I've mentioned, okay? It's about restoring your ability to heal itself, restoring your nutritional capacity within the body, restoring your myofascial positioning in the body, restoring your posture, restoring your core connections, restoring your ability to really rebuild, retrain your body so that you have strength. We wanna restore that strength. We wanna restore the confidence that you can have in your body. And restoration is talking about restoring all those, but it's also actively thinking about the activities that make you feel restored in your heart and in your mind and in your soul. So if that means taking time out to read a book, taking time out to watch a movie, taking five minutes out to just lay on the couch or to do a meditation, to have a shower, or to have a bath when you can soak that tissue, that scar when it's healed. Think about all these things that restore you, whether that's chatting to a friend, whether it's, it's writing in a journal, whether it's going and seeing a counsellor, really put that into place because rest and restoration along with good, healthy sleep hygiene, so really getting in great nourishing sleep when you can, drawing upon that rest whenever you can, is going to underpin your whole entire restorative recovery and rehabilitation journey. So I hope you found this video helpful today. If you have, then please let me know in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe because I've got a series of other videos. Don't forget to check out the videos below and check out the C-section recovery course because really you'll be doing yourself a huge favor to invest in your recovery journey. And as I said, especially if you are in that first one to two years following had a C-section, there's going to be information in there that is useful and helpful for you. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and share the link for any other moms you think would find it helpful too. And I thank you for watching today. And until I see you next time, I wish you well. Take care. Bye-bye.